Well, Dolly, we would like to introduce you to our fashionista. This is Ollie Shani. And cowboy boots are a real staple in Tennessee and Dollywood, but you don't have to live here in order to enjoy a really good pair of boots. And you're going to show us today yeah. why it's so important, and you can show us how we can make some. Exactly. Yes. Not make the yeah. boot, but embellish yeah, yeah, not make do the boot. Do you remember your first yeah, pair? Your first like, pair? do you remember putting on your first pair of cowboy boots? Oh, sure. I love it. In fact, I had a little cowgirl outfit when I first started singing. I was just about 10 years old, and my uncle used to take me around to sing locally here mm -hmm. in Knoxville and on TV, so I thought it was the biggest thing in the world when I got a pair of real cowboy boots to wear with the little cowgirl outfit mama had made for me. So That's how you complete the look. In addition to a coat. That's yeah. how you, in addition to, well, Orly, how do we put, uh, I know boots come with all sorts of, you yeah. know, Yeah. Well, you know what I think, them, it's, it's kind of like you're saying, we sort of envision cowboy boots in this very cowgirl kind of way and sort of southern style. And there's a lot of ways that we can make them our own and we can interject our own personal style, whether it's a little bohemian or a little girliness, whatever we want to do. So I got working a little bit earlier on making, uh, finding a way to customize these boots. So we can take a look at that. I am here in Dolly Parton's suite at the Dream War Resort. So Dolly decorated this with her eye on glitz and glam, never forgetting her country roots. So today I'm gonna make DIY cowgirl boots for every fashionista just like Dolly, of course. I was able to find a ton of boots at vintage and thrift stores for like 30 bucks, but that's it. So we're gonna get started. Now, I'm gonna start with these boots here. There's a couple of things to keep in mind. When you are doing a fabric like this, use those lines in the center front as your guide. That way, dead on, you look really even. So we're gonna lay the boot down and I'm gonna go ahead and open up my fabric. And I'm gonna cut off some of my excess. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look at my highest point, which is right here at the curve of the boot, and lay that right up there. And now I'm gonna look at my lowest point, which is right here at the bottom of the boot, because I've chosen to follow the natural line that exists within the boot, but you can do this however you like. Let's wrap it around to make sure that we're able to get the full circumference of that. There's only a little bit of overlap, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut. After your fabric has been cut to size, wrap it around the front, once again, keeping your pattern nice and straight. Then, run a line of fabric glue along the natural seam of the boot, staying as close to the edge as possible. The fabric should extend beyond the lowest part of the seam. We're gonna use scissors there to trim the excess and make perfect lines and curves. Once the front and sides have dried, we can work on the back of the boot. And now, what I would recommend doing is doing one side first and creating a nice straight line and then trying to match the other side. So just commit to one side, it really doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna commit to this side and I'm gonna glue right here and I want to stop basically right here where this new material comes in because again, we have a natural seam. And once that's dry, we'll go ahead and cut off that excess. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna work a little bit on the top. Again, this has a line, so we're gonna go ahead and follow the line, gluing right up until the edge, just like we did on the bottom. There we go. And then add just a little bit in there so that this is all in place. Okay. So this side is drying and I wanna give it a little bit of time, so I'm gonna go in and do a little bit of um, trimming. Before cutting, gently pull the fabric to see the edge of the glue and the seam you're gonna need to follow. Then just trim with scissors, nipping really carefully. You might need to wedge the boot in place with books or weights so it doesn't roll out of your way while you're cutting. You can also stuff the boot with leftover fabric or towels so it holds its shape while you work. Once the back is trimmed, you can glue down the remaining fabric and cut along the matching seam. And voila! You guys, these are all done. They were tedious, but they're totally worth it because they are completely one of a kind. They've got tons of texture. They're really cool. They're kind of boho meets cowgirl. They're amazing, right? Now, the next one, this is so easy. You are gonna be tempted to do this. Now, we're going to create these right here. This is just with simple lace. And when you buy really great lace, oftentimes you'll find that it almost looks like multiple appliques just sewn onto netting. See what I mean? 
These are each like little individual appliques. So you can cut them out and you can sort of apply them almost like patches, which is really, really fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out. Now, when you do that, you want to follow the natural line, but give yourself maybe about an eighth of an inch of netting, just so you have that room. It's really hard to get like right into all those crevices. So give yourself just a little bit of space. What I would do is cut the piece off of the rest of the lace so you're not sort of bogged down by it and now trim it. And we glue. So basically you wanna do like little dots because you don't really want that glue like smushing out onto the netting and onto the rest of the boot. Because it's so delicate, it doesn't need a lot of heavy glue to hold it in place like our other one did. Our other one needed a lot of glue. This is really just kind of tiny little anchors. All right, there you go. I think this Cali girl has definitely gone country. So we can make them girly or what, but how can we even uh, go a step further and personalize them even more? Yes, okay, so what I love is really envisioning your cowboy boots like a canvas. You can use that canvas to personalize them in th some way. You could write you know, a poem that means something to you, maybe a love letter, just some, some phrases that you've loved, or a song, perhaps. Or a I song. song. I mean, okay, so <laughs> sitting backstage watching you sing, you know, My Tennessee Mountain Home, it's so inspiring. And not just because your voice, you could sing the phone book and I'd want to cry. That's <laughs> totally irrelevant. Um, it's also because, you know, we've gotten to spend some time here in the Smoky Mountains in this beautiful place. And it really, I think it's safe to say that we all feel really, really welcome here and, and really connected to this place. So I wanted to personalize them. So these boots here have the lyrics of my Tennessee Mountain home, oh, and I'm wow. gonna finish off the very last one, just laughing and talking. We're gonna write this here. Now when you do it, you kinda wanna really have some freedom, that way it looks almost like graffiti. And you also wanna focus on having a couple of words sort of stand out and be really large. That way there's that sort of special. Yeah, but see, if you wear them, you gotta walk really slow or people so will never read it. Yeah. Or you'll be like, <laughs> slow down, I can't read your boots. And let me tell you, if my mom, if I had written on my new boots, I'd have oh. never gone oh my to my gosh. boots. If we had no. to pass them down but to it's somebody weird. else, probably. <laughs> then I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that hard work for you. And as a thank you for having us here and making it so welcoming How and so special, sweet. That is, please enjoy. This is so, so, so put these in the museum. Yeah. Yeah.